So now we're going to talk about something known as Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem relates to what we've already talked about with the total probability rule and the multiplication rule. It just kind of combines the two of them. And some of the examples we've done in previous screencasts are actually uh, we're using Bayes' theorem indirectly. So let's take a look at this. Again, we have an event B. It intersects events A and A0. A and A0 are mutually exclusive and they're exhaustive. So A and A prime sum to the total sample space. We saw that through the multiplication rule, we can write the intersection either as the top here or the bottom. You can write that two ways. We also saw from the total probability rule that we can write the probability of B as the following. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to equate these two, which I've done before. And then I'm going to take the total probability rule, this expression down here for probability of B, and put it in here. So rearranging, we get the probability of A given B can be determined by this right-hand side. And now I'm going to take probability of B, and I'm going to put that in there, and this is going to give us Bayes' rule. So I can rewrite that, and I get the probability, the conditional probability. Bayes' rule is used a lot when we're talking about conditional probability. The probability of getting A given B has occurred is given by this. And you notice that this term here in the numerator and the first term here are exactly the same. And so what we get is sort of a proportion here. Bayes' theorem thus is given here. We can also extend this if we didn't have just two events here. We had A and A prime if we had a bunch of different events. So generalizing, if we have events E1 through event K and we have uh, B can occur at, in different probabilities in each of those events. E1 through EK are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, meaning their union equals the entire sample space. Then we can generalize Bayes' theorem. The probability of E sub J, given that B has occurred, can be calculated by this formula, where the denominator here is just the sum of the probability, the conditional probabilities, given that E I has occurred probability of B multiplied by the probability of E sub I. And I've got an example where I'm going to explain and show you how we can use this. This is Bayes' theorem in general. So let's go ahead and work through an example. We live on an island where there are 100 cars. So this might be a small Pacific island. There's 100 cars, and they're all VW, Volkswagens. We have five Jettas, 15 Vanagans, 25 Golfs, 40 Rabbits, and 15 Toregs. And they're all different colors. We know that two Jettas are blue, five Vanagans are blue, three Golfs are blue, four Rabbits, and six Toregs. And you see that these are not independent events. In other words, the type of car and the color are not independent because the probability that a Jetta would be blue would be 2 over 5, which is 40%. Probability that a Vanagon is blue is about one third and so on. So there's different probabilities of getting the color blue based upon the type of car that you're talking about. The first question is, if I select a car at random, what is the probability that it's going to be blue? If we tally the total number of blue cars here, we get that there are 20 blue cars out of our total of 100 cars. Therefore, the probability of B is equal to 20%. I'm actually going to write our events here. So right now we're talking about blue car, and I'll actually color code this blue. So the probability of getting a blue car on this island is 0.2. That is, if you just select any car at random, there's a 20% chance that it's going to be blue. The next part of this question, B, if I select a car at random on the island, what is the probability that it is a blue van again? Well, you might be tempted to think, all right, let's calculate the probability of a van again. The probability of a van again, we have 15 out of 100 is equal to 0.15. And then you might say the probability of having a blue car is 20%. And so you might say the probability of have a, having a blue van again would be 0.2 times 0.15 or 0.03. So in other words, you might say what we're trying to find is the probability that you have a van again and it's blue the intersection, and you might just say naively that that's the probability of a Vanagon times the probability of being blue. This is not the case. Remember what we said earlier, color blue and the different types of cars, they're dependent. They're not independent events. This only applies 
to independent events. And they're not independent. So this is actually wrong. Instead, if you want to determine the probability of getting a blue vanigan, you just need to determine how many blue vanigans there are on the island. There are only five. And there are a total of 100 cars. The probability that you would get a blue vanigan would be 5 out of 100, or 0 0.05. And so that's the probability of getting a vanigan intersection with blue, blue vanigan. The last part of this problem, it asks us, if I select a blue car at random on the island, what is the probability that is a vanigan? So I'm going to introduce another event, V. So V is equal to, it's a vanigan. And B that I already defined is it's a blue car, blue car. So if I select a blue car at random, so that means we're given that I've selected a blue car, what's the probability that it's a vanigan? Recognizing how to write these things is one of the most important steps. And so what's the probability that it's a vanigan given that we have a blue car? And so that's what I'm trying to find. Whenever you're talking about conditional probability, you should think about the multiplication rule, the total probability rule, and in particular, you should think about Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem is given by this equation here. Now, before we do the math with Bayes' theorem, I wanted to just kind of uh, show you a shortcut. If you have the data, don't get too carried away with using these formulas because you're being asked if you select a blue car at random, what's the probability that it is a vanigan? And I'll show you that what I'm going to do here is equivalent to Bayes' theorem. So you're only considering these cars, right? You've selected a blue car and there are 20 blue cars. What's the probability that it'll be a vanigan? Well, there are five vanigans and there are 20 blue cars. So you you know that you've selected a blue car. There are five vanigans, so there's a 25% chance. I could write this as probability V given B is equal to 25%. There's a 25% chance that if you select a blue car, it'll be a vanigan. But let me show you mathematically, because sometimes you don't have this information. Let me show you how we could determine this. Now, Bayes' theorem, in the denominator, all these events, EIs, these represent all the other cars. So E1 would be Jetta, E2, Vanagon, E3, Golf, and so on. So if I wanted to, to use this formula, the probability that we get Vanagon given that our car is blue. So we take the probability that's blue given that's a Vanagon times the probability of a Vanagon divided by, now in the denominator, we're taking the probabilities that it's blue given all the different types of cars here. So we have Vanagons, Jettas, Tourigs, and so on. So I'm going to dot, 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 all that. So that's how we use Bayes' theorem. And when I plug in the numbers, I get 5 over 15 times 15 over 100. This first term is actually for, this is for the Vanagons. And this first term down here is Vanagons. And then I go Jettas. That's the product of the conditional probability, probability that's blue, given that it's a Jetta, two-fifths, times the probability that we have a Jetta, which is 5 over 100. The next term is then for golfs, and then the next term is for rabbits, and then Touregs. And what you notice is we can cross out, so I can kind of cross out in each term. This simplifies nicely. And in the end, the 100s cancel because we have a 1 over 100 in the numerator and denominator. And so what this really boils down to is 5 divided by 20, which is 1 fourth or 0 0.25, 25%. I wanted to show you this quickly using a graphical method. So this box represents all 100 cars on the island. And then we've got these different categories, these columns. They're not to scale. We have our five Jettas on the left, 15 Vanagans. We have our 25 Golfs, our 40 Rabbits, and our 15 Touregs. And they combine total to 100. Now we could sort of put in these charts here because two of those Jettas, and again, this is not to scale, but that would be two, are blue. Of the Vanagans, a third are blue. So five of those, 15 are blue. Of the Golfs, we only have three, three of those 25. And you see the proportion of each of these categories is not the same. That's what makes it non-independent, makes it dependent. And then of the rabbits, we have only four that are blue. And finally, we have six of the Touregs. Let's just go back to what we're being asked in this part. We're being asked if we pick a blue car. We've picked a blue car. Just based upon that, so given the conditional probability, we've picked a blue car that constrains us 
graphically to this portion. Now that is just the sum of all the blue cars. And remember when I did this using Bayes' theorem, the denominator I got to be 20. That's just the sum of all of the blue cars. So that's equal to 20. What we're trying to find is what's the probability that it's a van again. Graphically then, we're going to look just at this region. So what's the probability that it's a van again? So I guess I'll make that as a, a black cross-hatched region. And so really what this means is that we're taking the ratio of that blue-black cross-hatched region and we're dividing by just the blue region there. All right. We know that there are five blue vanigans. So this ratio is 5 divided by 20. And so depending upon how you look at things, I like to look at this graphically. But what you're doing, this graphical method, is exactly what we're getting mathematically using Bayes' theorem that we did above. So hopefully this screencast gives you a better idea of Bayes' theorem and how to implement it into solving problems.